Hey folks, Matthew Peterson here, trainer at Pragmatic Works. If this is your first time on our channel, make sure to subscribe. And if you like the video, hit like. We like to post lots of videos throughout the week, helping you out across the entire power platform uh, and other products outside of that. And in this video, I want to continue on our Teams app building series that I've done. So we're building a check-in application and we're building the application inside of Teams. So you can pick up right where I'm coming with just to watch or if you want to build with me from the beginning to end, take a look in the description below and start off with episode one. So this video is all about letting our users get a confirmation about the record that they just created. So the idea is going to be, hey, we create this check-in for a student. Now let's show them the details of that record and make sure everything looks good. The user is either going to say, yes, it all looks good. Let's go make a new check-in or no, nope, I need to go modify one of those values inside of it. So let's take a look at how this is done. So I'm back in my Teams environment. I've clicked on Power Apps on the left hand side. I've clicked on Build and I'm going to go into the team that I've been building this app in, which is my YouTube app in a team series. Once here, I'm going to click on See All so I can get into the solution. And what I'm ready to do now is go into my applications and let's go into our student check-in application. So as this pulls up, we've got a lot built inside of here. Our last episode was how do we use forms inside of our apps to create the data? We've got that set. Now we're going to take it one step further. And the goal is going to be after my user comes on over and hits the save button, I want to take them to a new screen that shows them the record that they just created. So to get this started off with, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take SCR main and I'm just going to duplicate this screen. Actually, yeah, I'm going to duplicate this. I don't want to do a lot of extra work. So I'm just going to duplicate my screen. I'm going to give it a new name. So instead of SCR main one here, I'm going to call this SCR confirmation screen, just like so. And let me do a little bit of a zoom in action here as well. So it's a little bit easier to see. All right. So now on the screen, I'm just going to get rid of everything that I don't want. So I don't need my button, my cancel. I don't need the form. So I'm going to delete those. I don't need my gallery. I don't need my input bar. So I'm just control selecting, getting rid of that. And I just got my general template to start with. So the first thing I'm going to put on here is I'm going to insert a form. But this time, unlike on our last video where we put in an edit form, we're going to put in a display form. Uh, display forms are used to show one record at a time and you get to choose what details about that record that you want to see. Edit form is used for editing or also for creating new records like we learned. We're going to learn how to edit records in our next video, but let's just talk about the display form in this one. So once we choose that we want to use a display form, we're going to click it here and then we're just going to move this on over a little bit. Again, you can get all the picture perfect sizing done at the end and let's connect it to our data source. So with our form selected, I'm actually going to rename this. So I'm going to call this form confirmation last check in. I know that's a long name, but I like to keep my names very explicit here. So over on the right hand side, I'm going to choose my data source. And so the data source is going to be my student check in and check out data. So once I choose it, it's now going to start to put some of the form fields inside of here. And again, if I don't like these fields or I want to change the layout, if I come on over here to the right, I can click on edit fields and then choose what I want. So the check-in identifier, don't really need it. I don't care about the unique record number here. So that's something my, my end user, my teachers don't need to be made aware of. So I'm going to remove that. Uh, I do want to keep the teacher in here. I do want to keep the check-in date and time. I want to keep in the comments, but I don't want the checkout date and time. So I'm going to remove this one as well. And then we can add more fields in as well. So if we wanted to put in what room we checked them into, let's see here. So this was called our location. So I'm going to add location in. And so I think that looks good to get us started here. Now again, we can change this display form. Currently it's set to three columns. Uh, I'm going to set this to just being one column because I'm only showing four different fields inside of this form. So I think it looks good just uh, like this. So teacher, comments, check-in date, 
and the location. And then maybe I'll change the background color so it pops off a little bit better. I'll change it to a nice white here. All right, so now we have the form here. Now the goal is going to be after my users create the record, I want them taken to the screen and see the very last record creation that they submitted. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna head back to SCR main. And what we did in our last video is on the form, we had what was called an on success property. And so for the on success property, we see that it's doing quite a few different things. It's gonna make a new form, it's gonna notify, and then it's also going to show that in a green banner. Now for what I want to do, I'm gonna run into an issue. And the issue I'm gonna run into is I'm trying to use a formula called last submit. And what the last submit formula will do is it will bring back the last submission of your form that you just created, the record you created with that form. However, anytime you put your form back into new mode, the Power App loses the last submission. So we have a few different options here. I could, I could get rid of new form at this point. Uh, and I could put the new form control on my confirmation screen. So after they say, yes, everything looks good, I could then tell it, hey, go back to that form and put it into new mode. Or I could use a collection where I could store the data inside of the app and then display it in the form. I'm gonna talk about collections in my next video, so I'm gonna do it the alternative way. So, but let me show you the little, the little trick here. So, I'm gonna keep new form to start with, just to show you the troubleshoot. So, put it into new form, give them a notification, and I'm gonna go semicolon, navigate my user over to that new screen I just made, which was SCR confirmation screen. All right, so just like that. So that's gonna take me to the confirmation screen. Now on the confirmation screen, that is where we have our display form. And so right now it's hooked into the student check-in and outs data, but for a display form, as well as an edit form, we have to tell it what item, what record do we want to display inside of this display form. So one thing I could do is use that last submit function. So I could write in here uh, form one, and I'm gonna give that a, a better name in a second. So form one dot last submit. So this will bring back the record of the last submission on form one. Now again, I really don't like form one, so I intentionally did this in this video. One thing I want you to know is right now it's referencing form one, which is currently on this screen. And I've written all these different formulas that reference form one. Well, what if I wanna change this control name? Is that going to break my formulas? It will not. So I'm gonna rename this to FRM check-in. When I make that change here, notice it makes the change in this formula. And if I go back to my display form, it changes it here. So you can always rename those controls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this app and see what happens here. So I'll come down here to Layla and we're gonna check it in. I'm gonna put room 43 and I'll do something like getting uh, quadratics help and then I'll hit save. Now when I hit save, it's gonna take me to this screen, but it says no item to display. And the reason it says no item to display is because on success, I had it separate and I had it go back to new form and it wipes out the last form submission. So how do we fix it? Well, we're gonna first have to wipe out that new form formula. So let's come back to our screen of SCR main and we're gonna to go to its form property, it's on success. So let me come on down to the, oop, I'm on the wrong screen here, on SCR main. Let me click its form, which was form check-in. And on success, I'm gonna remove the new form form check-in. So I'm gonna remove that. So now just do the notify statement and navigate me to my screen confirmation. So I got rid of the new form. So I'm gonna hit play here. So let's make another one. So I'll do this one for Jack here. So we'll put him in room 14 and we'll say poetry help. Getting help writing a poem. I'll hit save. Now when I hit save, take a look. Because I got rid of that new form action, it was able to bring in that last submission of the data. So we fixed it. This is one fix to it. 
In my next video, I'm going to show you a different way because you might have different ideas because in the next video, what I'll also be showing is, hey, I've made a mistake. Let me go edit this record. And by using the form dot last submit, it's not going to quite work the way I want it to. So we're going to talk about what collections are in our next video. But if you want to go this route, here would be the last thing that we would want to make sure we put into this. Because if you're like just giving them a confirmation screen and you want them to see the last thing that they entered, and then once they're done, navigate them back to the home screen, what I would do is in this application, I would put in a button here. So I'm not going to make it picture perfect and pretty. I'll, I'll, I'll make it look nicer before the next video, but I'll just put in a button. I'll change the text to say something like uh, confirm um, all is good. All right. Again, you can make it whatever you want to here, but here's what I would need on this button. So on the button itself, and I'll rename it BT and confirm like so, I would go to its on select property. So it's on select property. What do I want it to do? Well, I want it to navigate me back to my first screen, SCR main, and semicolon, I want my form to go back into new mode because right now I don't have any function that's telling it to go back to new mode. So it's kind of like stuck in limbo. So because I took it out of the on success, I would put it here on this button and I would say new form, form check-in. So now with this button and if I hit play, okay, everything looks good. I'm going to say confirm all is good. I select it and now my form is back into new mode. So again, having that last submission screen is kind of nice. And another use case is you might say, well, Matt, you know, what if in my app I'm going to show them their records? Well, then you really don't have to worry about that. They could go to the gallery and see it. But your application might be only for users to create records. And yes, we give them a notification that the record was created, but maybe we want them to see the details to see if they made any mistakes. And if they did, they go, whoops, I put in the wrong value. Let me quickly edit this because the only way they see the record would be on that confirmation screen if you're not showing them a gallery with all of your records that they've created. So hopefully this helps you out in your app. Stay tuned for the next video. We are going to be getting into editing. Basically, how can we just edit just random records that we have? And how can we edit the last created record when my teachers might have made a mistake? So again, if you like the video, make sure to hit like. Definitely subscribe to the channel to see all the videos that we post. And if you liked it and you're enjoying, I'll see you in the next episode.